Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather. In this video, we're gonna be talking about yet another severe weather outbreak. So if you're new to the channel, click the subscribe button and the notification bell to get all my daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. So let's get right to it. Here's your overall high temperatures uh, today as far as uh, Monday, April the 5th. And look up here in Maine, we're talking 44 degrees. They actually had some snow uh, yesterday in Caribou, uh, five, about five and a half inches, and that put them at 104 inches on the year, and that's actually above normal uh, for them up there. But on the flip side, they had 98 degrees in Phoenix, and that tied a record high back in 1961, and they had some record highs in the midsection of the countries. And even today, we're talking 87, you know, all the way up in, in Nebraska here, with 80s trying to penetrate into uh, Texas with 70s across the board where you're really warming up uh, into, into the southeast. But let me turn our attention up here to the northwest here. That's going to be our cold front. And they've got 40s and 50s uh, for highs in places like uh, Idaho and Montana. And some of the higher elevations, we're talking snow uh, later on today. In fact, some of these have uh, you know winter weather advisories in, in, in effect right now in the portions of uh, Idaho and to uh, Montana here. And then uh, the, out here ahead of it, that's what that's our low pressure. That's going to be setting up uh, later on today as this kind of gets its act together as we warm and as as these kind of these dew points uh, turn around uh, with more moisture in the air. That's going to be setting the stage for more severe weather uh, later on tonight. Because by the time we get into uh, this evening, into the overnight hours, that low will be setting up shop over a portions of Nebraska now where they had those warmer temperatures earlier on in the afternoon. And that'll be over uh, uh, Iowa, portions of Iowa, as well as uh, Minnesota. In fact, the uh, Storm Prediction Center has upgraded the risk from yesterday from a marginal to a severe. And some of these could be really strong and and portions of uh, Minneapolis here, uh, Bloomington, much of central uh, Minnesota, uh, and even on the outskirts where they do have that marginal risk, you're still going to be looking at from some from strong to isolated severe storms and uh, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, as well as uh, you know Duluth, Minnesota, uh, Sioux City, Iowa could be hit. Uh, this is going to be mainly an evening event into the overnight, and it's going to be mainly with that cold core loft. Some larger hailstones could be falling out of the sky from this event and some damaging winds. And then you also have a, a potentially little isolated tornado threat as well, about a 2% chance as this um, moves across uh, from west to east into the overnight hour. So definitely be on the lookout for that and get all your cars in the garage to keep, you know, keep them protected. But by tomorrow, look at the high temperatures now. I mean, so yeah, those, those 80s continue to surge, if not 90s uh, in West Texas. We've got some 40s, you know, 40s showing up here and uh, portions of, uh, you know, get into Oregon here. And as that colder, like I mentioned, back behind that, that's gonna be some colder temperatures. And that cold core will be over uh, Wyoming now with, you know, 35 degrees is a high. So that's some definitely a chilly area. And that's the temperature gradient that we're looking at. And that's setting the stage for that severe weather threat as this continues to push uh, further to the southeast as we go uh, throughout the week, tapping into that warm sector. We've got those 80s and 70s for much uh, the eastern two-thirds uh, of the country and so yeah by the time we get into uh, Tuesday into Tuesday night that low will be digging down into the Texas panhandle but out ahead of it we've got some stronger storms gonna be breaking out into portions of Nebraska here and to Kansas so in fact the, the storm prediction center has already elevated that risk as well to a slight risk for severe weather and portions of uh, Wichita Kansas uh, getting into Lawrence Kansas as well as like Joplin Missouri areas and then even extending down into Oklahoma City where they could be looking at some stronger storms uh, later on tonight again it's a, you know later on tonight event you know after after sunset into the overnight hours be looking at some of those stronger storms and again i think this threat would be the kind of the same with larger hail uh damaging winds up to 60 miles an hour and you do have that little bit of an isolated uh tornado threat as well later on this evening later on uh, tuesday evening going into the overnight hours on a uh, wednesday you know wednesday morning 
But by the time we get into Wednesday, uh, here's your high temperature buzz by then. So, you know, where we were talking 77 in Kansas, you know, the day before, now we're talking 57. So that's a pretty good punch uh, underneath that uh, cold core a uh, low pressure system that's going to be diving down to the southeast uh, throughout the week. But yeah, to add ahead of it, now we're talking 90s uh, down for the deep south end of Texas, where they're going to be starting to hit, feeling that effects of uh, that, uh, that, those stronger storms as this continues pushing off, especially like into places like Arkansas, getting into Louisiana, into, uh, you know, Mississippi here as we go into the day on Wednesday, because that that'll start to really get its act together i think these dew points will really start to kind of creep it up uh the shear will be a lot more active uh you will have a lot of more rotation in the atmosphere by then and then you also have this kind of a comma q uh you know bow echo type setup is going to be taking place and that could be indicative of some stronger straight line winds also penetrating out ahead of this front this uh this uh, system as well as it moves from west to east so you definitely have to be looking out for that again it's going to be a l later on to the evening as we go into the afternoon late afternoon uh into the evening into the overnight and in fact look at your uh lightning index uh by the time we get into uh wednesday afternoon into the into the later evening hours that bow echo looks indicative and in setting up shop anywhere from east texas and shifting into northern louisiana especially into arkansas is going to be on the lookout for, under the gun for some some stronger storms if not severe storms uh and then tornado tornadic type storms uh by the time we get into uh you know late late afternoon on wednesday especially as we get into the overnight and that'll extend into portions of a missouri getting into portions of uh, uh illinois here into iowa and uh, minnesota with some definitely some stronger storms and in fact the storm prediction center has highlighted this threat and i think this is probably going to be your most uh significant threat of the week uh so far by wednesday and i think this even gets upgraded uh to at least an enhanced risk uh by tomorrow into portions of uh, memphis tennessee getting into shreveport especially into little rock arkansas down here south into jackson mississippi as well as uh, like long longview texas on the east side of the dallas Fort Worth area extending into east texas as the system uh, pushes across but even extended as far as north as uh, kansas city missouri could be seeing some of those stronger storms and all the way down here to the south into uh, new orleans where they're going to be tapping into some of that uh you know warmer moisture higher dew points and look at the uh, look at the latest uh, 850 uh, cyclonic uh, vorticity index where you can kind of see that comma cue taken out ahead of it and then that bow echo extending uh, to the south side and that's that stronger push of uh, straight line winds could, could be a linear band of uh, you know stronger storms and within that band that's where that tornadic threat could be taken taken shape along that along that uh, that line there as uh, we have to look out for uh, uh, tornadoes uh, forming out ahead of that uh, that the kind of the, the bow echo here as this you know continues uh, pushing off into the east into the overnight hours. But yeah, look what look at what they're going to be tapping into with these higher dew points by then. We're talking mid 60s uh, by then, so there's going to be plenty of ample uh, amount of moisture in the atmosphere uh, to fuel these thunderstorms. And that that surge just lifts all the way well north into uh, Illinois even in the portions of Wisconsin with some 60 degree dew points. So yeah, that warm sector will be high and prevalent. Here by Thursday, here's your warm temperatures as that continues to shift off to the east. We kind of modify a little bit on the backside so you can see these temperatures kind of rebounding uh, by then to the north. This, this warm sector continues to stay warm uh, down to the south. I mean, pushing almost 100 degrees uh, down here in uh, south Texas where these 80s hang on into Louisiana and to Florida and then even some 60s up here in the northeast and then maine is still going to be your coldest uh, place uh you know in, into the mid to upper 50s uh by then but by thursday like i mentioned that same system continues uh, to push it off from the west to the east and that curly cue will set up shop all the way down south and now the severe threat shifts 
a little bit further east. So now places into Mississippi, into uh, Alabama, getting into portions of uh, Georgia, you know, western Tennessee, into Kentucky uh, by then are going to be under the gun, especially into uh, Illinois, get into uh, portions of Iowa, I mean, Ohio by then, as this continues to lift off uh, to the east. And as we get into the overnight hours on Thursday, going into uh, Friday morning, that will continue shifting off a little bit further, uh, extending into Georgia now as this continues up the coast into the into uh, to the Carolinas, but modifying the severe threat as it continues to shifting uh, further north. And I do feel by Thursday, even though the Storm Prediction Center doesn't have anything yet on day four, I do feel like the severe threat will be a lifting a little bit further uh, to the east. And that'll be over, uh, again, portions of uh, Arkansas getting into uh, the Tennessee Valley and, and even into portions of the Florida Panhandle might be under the gun for uh, more severe weather uh, by then. And as we go into Friday, so as we go into Friday, there's going to be another piece of energy that's going to be back building out from Texas. That's going to be second up possibly a second round of severe weather down here in the southeast. So now we're going to be looking at places into uh, you know for the deep south again into you know Louisiana into uh, portions of uh, Alabama going into Georgia up here in the Carolinas as as we look later on today into the overnight hours on Friday. But because here's your high temperatures uh, by by Friday, your high temperatures are going to be well into the 80s. We even might touch 90 degrees uh, in, into the Dallas Worth area. As that, that warm sector continues uh, to surge uh, down to the south, and you can look at the temperatures uh, for much of the countries, you know, up, up to the north here, some 50s uh, coming in. And so that's going to be feeling really nice after experiencing some of those higher temperatures, uh, you know, on Monday. Uh, today, we're going to be dropping by Friday a good 20, 25 degrees from those highs, that's what you're going to be seeing uh, today. So, like I mentioned, on Friday, we're, we're going to be talking about another piece of an e energy that's going to be coming back out from East Texas into the same areas of the Southeast as these another developing low pressure is going to be forming. So we could be setting up, again, another threat for severe weather into East Texas, uh, going into Louisiana, going into Arkansas again from much of the Southeast and going up to the Carolinas as as uh, you know, the latest of SIPS guidance kind of implies that. I think this is a little bit more bullish than what I think is going to play out. A lot of this is going to probably setting up, you know, east of the Dallas Fort Worth area. But you know, Dallas may finally get some rain uh, out of this out of this deal at least. As this, we'll see how this all kind of comes together. But there is going to be a second uh, piece of energy that's going to be coming out from on uh, Friday on the back side of that that one system that came through earlier on in the week going to be setting up another severe threat for these same areas they're going to be under the gun for uh wednesday uh potentially so but yeah but by saturday that same system will continue to shift off a little bit further out to the southeast now bringing some of those uh rains into the florida uh panhandle but for much of central and southern florida you're going to be high and dry pretty much all week long as you can see out to the north here, trying to see some colder air, trying to push by you know by by Saturday the tenth from uh, to the northwest again. So here's your here's your rainfall from the latest uh, European model. You can kind of see definitely where, where this is all the action is going to be this week, from California to Nevada to the Four Corners region, much of uh, you know much of West Texas high and dry. You're barely going to even see a drop of rain this this week. Much of it's going to be extending off to, to the northwest. This is going to be your most active period into uh, South Dakota, especially as you get into Minnesota and Wisconsin. And then as we get down here to the south here, I think it does basically east of uh, the Dallas Worth area and then East Texas. And especially we be, could have some flooding concerns on top of the severe weather into Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama and portions of Georgia and get it into the Tennessee Valley again, where those, those soils are really wet, uh, you know, all, all week long from the, from what we dealt with the last uh, two weeks. And the GFS model kind of implies the same thing. So they're both pretty much consistent on the data, what's actually going to happen this week and where these uh, storms are going to kind of take place and where the heavier rains are going to be as well. So, hey, I appreciate you guys uh, watching. 
do like this video definitely leave your comments below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update where i protect you before and after the storm